The Mobile Connectivity Trailer is a towable, rapidly deployable communication trailer that can be used to create a cellular coverage area where wireless coverage is not available. The Mobile Connectivity Trailer's compact size and lightweight enable it to be quickly transported to remote areas where other larger mobile solutions would not be a viable option. Following some basic instruction, it is possible for one or two people to deploy the mobile connectivity trailer inside of one hour. This video will guide the viewer through a typical setup operation and features a fully equipped mobile connectivity trailer with all available options. Depending on the configuration, your trailer may not have some of the options shown. Please note that features and options are subject to change without notice. For the purposes of this training video, the mobile connectivity trailer will be referred to as the MCT or MCT unit. The MCT can be towed to the location that requires communication coverage, utilizing a properly equipped tow vehicle. The MCT is rated to have a maximum weight of 4,000 pounds. Depending on how the unit is equipped and loaded, the actual weight of the MCT may be less than 4,000 pounds at the time of deployment. However, the tow vehicle should always be equipped and rated to tow a trailer weighing the maximum allowable weight of 4,000 pounds. When choosing the location for the MCT, ensure that the space is in close proximity to the area that requires coverage, is adequately level, and has a clear line of sight to the southwest sky. Southwest is the direction from which the satellite antenna will receive its signal, so obstructions in that direction may prevent proper operation. Park the MCT in the chosen space and shock the wheels to prevent any rolling of the unit. The MCT can be left connected to the tow vehicle or unhitched at this time. If it is decided to leave the MCT hitched to the tow vehicle during operation, be sure to disconnect the trailer plug from the tow vehicle in order to avoid activating the deployed equipment alarm system. This system prevents the MCT unit from being towed when certain pieces of equipment are not properly stowed. Use the four corner jacks to level and stabilize the MCT. Unpin the rear corner jacks and rotate them so that the sand pad is positioned toward the ground. Then turn the crank handle to extend the jack leg. The front corner jacks are normally stowed inside of the MCT unit on a storage bracket that is located immediately inside of the rear personnel door. The door can be held open utilizing the door holder mechanism. Unpin and remove the jacks from the storage bracket and pin them in place at the forward jack mounts with the sand pads toward the ground. The MCT may also be equipped with square jack pads that provide additional surface area under the jack feet in soft ground conditions. These pads may be employed at the user's discretion. The pads, if equipped, are located inside of the MCT in a dedicated pocket. Also, if equipped, the forward outriggers can be extended up to 4 feet on each side to provide greater stability to the MCT. Once the MCT is parked in level, electrical power must be provided to the unit. Prior to doing so, ensure that all of the electrical circuit breakers are in the off position. The electrical circuit breaker panels are located on the front interior wall of the MCT unit. If equipped and desired, Electrical power can be provided by operating the onboard generator. Otherwise, power can be applied to the MCT at the power inlet that is located at the front exterior of the unit, adjacent to the mass structure. A commercial power cable is included for this purpose. Adapters are available from Pelsu that allow the power cable to connect to a variety of commonly utilized electrical receptacles. If operating the generator, the most convenient location to start the generator is at the remote start panel, which is located within the interior of the MCT. Start the onboard generator by holding the start and stop switch in the up position. In doing so, the diesel fuel generator will initiate an automatic priming and preheat cycle. Once the generator starts and continues to run, release the switch. The generator can also be started at the generator control panel, which is located outside of the MCT accessible by removing the weather cover in the event that it is required. It may take a few moments for the generator to fully stabilize and produce power output. Electrical power is available when the fuel gauge and LCD screen become illuminated.
which are located adjacent to the generator start and stop switch. Energize each circuit by toggling each circuit breaker to the on or up position. Once the circuits are energized, set the climate control unit to the desired temperature setting. The remote thermostat is mounted on the interior wall above the workspace. Select either the heat or cool function based on the current ambient conditions. 70 degrees is a good setting for occupant comfort and temperature control of the network gear. The MC2 is designed primarily to rely on satellite-based backhaul due to its intention to be deployed in remote areas. However, the MCT unit is also adaptable to other backhaul sources and may not come equipped with a roof-mounted satellite antenna, depending upon the ordered configuration. For the purposes of this video, instruction will be provided using an MCT unit that is equipped with a roof-mounted AVL auto-acquire satellite antenna and active via SAT-1 service for satellite backhaul. The other components of the MCT can be assembled, cabled, and configured while the satellite antenna is auto-acquiring its signal. The first step in the process is to initialize and command the satellite antenna system to acquire. The upper two components in the rack are the satellite modem and the satellite antenna controller. These two components work in combination to acquire and process the satellite-based internet source. When the circuit breakers at the breaker panel are energized, the components within the network enclosure should be automatically powered on. This is indicated by the presence of illuminated LEDs and display screens where equipped. If the units are not illuminated, check the power switch at the surge suppressor as well as the power switch that is located at the face of the antenna controller to ensure that they are in the on position. Also verify that the main ground fault circuit interrupter or GFCI equipped receptacle at the base of the enclosure has not been tripped. Once energized, the satellite controller will take a few moments to process the boot up procedure. When that procedure is completed, the LCD screen will reset and flash a field of asterisk, then will display this message. Hold down the keypad that is marked with the green colored check mark for three seconds. This action will command the system to start the acquisition procedure. There will be a delay as signals are processed, but once physical movement of the satellite antenna is visually confirmed, the user can move on to other phases of the MCT setup. The satellite antenna can only maintain stability and signal strength below a certain wind speed. In this case, winds exceeding 45 miles per hour. Extremely high winds can also damage the satellite antenna. For these reasons, the satellite backhaul system is equipped with a wind speed measurement device. The anemometer head of the wind speed sensing unit must be removed from the storage bracket mounted on the interior wall of the MCT behind the workspace and installed on the top of the exterior stanchion that is located on the curbside of the trailer. Loosen the knob, remove the stanchion from its holder, and place the anemometer head device into the top of the stanchion. Secure the anemometer head with the knob and slide the stanchion back into the holder. Extend the stanchion to its maximum height when it is flush with the bottom of the holder and secure the assembly in place with the knob. The anemometer head is self-powered and communicates wirelessly with the control unit that is located next to the circuit breakers. A sustained wind will cause the speed to be displayed on the LCD screen. Winds in excess of 50 miles per hour will cause the satellite antenna to automatically stow. The majority of the remainder of the MCT assembly will take place at the mast structure located at the front of the MCT unit and will require a stepladder. If equipped, remove the compact telescopic stepladder from its storage bracket located inside the MCT. Extend and unfold the ladder as per the included instructions and place it near the mass structure. If the MCT had previously been stowed properly, the mast should be capped with a canvas bag. Remove the canvas bag and stow it in a secure place where it can be located and installed upon stowage of the MCT unit. The mast is equipped to accept the standard MCT cantenna assembly, the optional Wi-Fi array, or a combination of the two assemblies. In this video, 
The installation of the Cantenna assembly and the Wi-Fi array will be shown, but either assembly can be installed independently upon the mast if desired. Remove the Wi-Fi array from its storage bracket, located inside and to the left of the MCT unit's rear personnel door. This is done by removing the securing pin and lifting the assembly up and off of the storage bracket. Bring the Wi-Fi array to the top of the mast structure and pin it in place with the securing pin and safety bail. The Cantenna assembly will be installed next. This assembly is located to the right of the rear personnel door when stored. Remove the weather caps that are placed on the DEN connectors at the base of the Cantenna and store them for later reinstallation. Disconnect the Cantenna securing strap and remove the pin at the mounting base. Install the Cantenna assembly at the top of the Wi-Fi array by placing the tubular base socket over the post at the top of the Wi-Fi array. Secure the Cantenna assembly in place, utilizing the locking pin and safety bail. The next step of the MCT assembly will involve the cable connections to the antenna assemblies and the MCT unit. The primary RF cables are intended to be stored on the clamps located below the window on the curbside interior of the MCT unit. However, they may be located elsewhere inside of the unit, depending upon how the unit was stowed. The RF cables are identifiable by the color-coded bands at the DEN ends. There may be other non-color-coded RF cables stored inside of the MCT. These are intended to be spare cables in the event that the primary units are lost or damaged. The RF cables can be attached in any order and are coded, as is the base of the antenna to make the connections fairly intuitive. Connect the RF cable with a double red stripe on each end to the DIN port inside of the red circle on the base of the Cantenna. After connection to the Cantenna, uncoil the cable hand over hand along a flat surface to prevent any damage to the cable. For this step, a second individual is useful in managing the cables. Connect the remaining RF cable to the base of the Cantenna in the same fashion. The cable with the red and blue stripe will connect to the DIN port that is inside of the blue circle. The Ethernet cables are supplied affixed and secured to the Wi-Fi array. Following installation of the RF cables, the Ethernet cables should be unstrapped from their storage location and uncoiled alongside with the RF cables. Use one of the flexible gear ties to bundle the cables together and prepare to extend the mast by ensuring that the cables will not snag when the mast is extended. Close the drain valve that is located at the base of the mast and remove the air compressor control pendant from its storage enclosure that is located at the exterior street side of the MCT unit. Then, simultaneously pull the uppermost T-handle on the mast while pushing the air compressor switch in the up position. Continue to pull the T-handle while the section extends until it reaches its uppermost position. Have another person carry the unattached ends of the cables so they do not drag along the ground as the mast is extended. If another person is not available, the cables can be loosely looped over the shoulder and managed in that manner as well. While holding the T-handle, the user will feel the mast section reach the top of its stroke. The T-handle can then be released. Continue by pulling on the next T-handle down from the first and repeat the procedure for each mast section ensuring that each section locks into place. If not using the optional guy wire kit, use the colored eyelets at periodic sections on the mast to secure the cable bundle by using the flexible gear ties. When attaching to the uppermost eyelet on the mast, hold the cable bundle up gently while securing, thereby relieving some of the stress on the antenna connections when the gear tie is secured. If employing the optional guy wire kit, its installation and the modification to the mast extension procedure and altered cable securing steps are addressed in a supplemental instructional video. Once extended and locked into place, open the drain valve that is located at the base of the mast. The pendant switch will no longer be required. It can be stowed inside its storage compartment at this time. Depending upon the coverage radius that is required, the mast may not need to be fully extended. The mast can be extended and locked in place at any of the fixed heights along its length. Extra cable can be looped and secured in place on the mast structure by utilizing additional gear ties. It is now necessary 
to connect the free ends of all the cables to the wiring entrance box that is located at the front exterior wall of the MCT. Unlock the access door and swing it open in order to access the cable ports. Then remove the weather covers from the wiring ports. The Ethernet cables will connect to the two RJ45 connections that are labeled CWF for customer Wi-Fi and WBH for Wi-Fi backhaul. The port that is labeled ABH will not be utilized and can remain covered unless an auxiliary backhaul source is being implemented or another pass-through to the network enclosure is required. The color-coded RF cables will be attached to the following convention. The cable with the double red stripe is to be connected to DIN port 70. The cable with the red and blue stripe is to be connected to DIN port 71. The legend decal displays additional ports that are capped by plates within the wiring entrance box. The default MCT configuration only requires two RF connections, but the MCT is customizable and expandable if additional connections were to be required. The wiring entrance box door can be closed and locked with the cables connected due to the notch and brush seal that is located at the base of the door. This feature prevents tampering with any of the cable connections once the MCT is deployed. The mast assembly can also be rotated in order to focus coverage upon a particular target area. Rotation of the mast is accomplished by installing the turning handles. Locate the handles within the MCT and place them around the mast tube. Secure the handles in place by tightening the clamping screws. Next, loosen the two wing screws at the base of the mast and grasp the turning handles in order to rotate the mast to the desired orientation. The base of the cantenna is marked with arrows that indicate the direction of the maximum propagation strength for each sector. Once the mast is in its desired location, tighten the two wing screws to maintain the orientation. At this point, the satellite antenna should have already acquired its target and begun to traffic data. This can be confirmed by observing the presence of the message Acquire Complete on the LCD display that is located on the face of the satellite antenna controller. It is apparent that the security appliance and network switch are connected to the cloud when the status indicator LEDs on the face of the components glow solid white. When first brought online, the satellite modem, security appliance, and network switch may be required to install firmware and or configuration updates. This will be especially true if the MCT unit has not been connected to the cloud for an extended period of time. For that reason, it is highly important that the MCT unit be powered up and connected on a quarterly basis at a minimum, preferably monthly, so that the unit is ready for deployment when the need arises. Usage of the MCT will typically be in an emergency response scenario where delays would be especially detrimental. Further detail on the monitoring and diagnosis of other network conditions is presented in other tutorials and training materials that will not be covered in this video. The default MCT unit is configured with one Verizon Wireless Network Extender for Enterprise, otherwise known as a femtocell or eFemto. The network extender is the component that actually provides the 4G LTE coverage bubble through the Cantenna. The network extender is coming to service when the status LED on the face of the unit is flashing green rapidly. The status LED will exhibit different colors and patterns during startup or when in a fault condition. Further information on the status LED is available within the Quick Start Guide for the network extender that is included inside of the MCT product manual. The MCT unit is now fully operational and will supply 4G LTE voice and data coverage and optional Wi-Fi coverage indefinitely providing electrical power is maintained to the unit. When it is desired to deactivate and stow the MCT unit, the steps to be taken are essentially the reverse of the setup process. The first step is to stow the satellite antenna. This step is initiated at the satellite antenna controller. Hold down the key that is marked with the red X for three seconds. The display screen will then ask for confirmation of this command. This is completed by pressing the green checkmark key once. The satellite antenna will then begin its stowing procedure automatically. If the antenna controller is not accessible for whatever reason, the stow command can be relayed by utilizing the red button that is located at the base of the antenna on the roof of the MCT unit. 
Likewise, the green button can be utilized to command the satellite antenna to acquire, if necessary. In the event that electrical power has become unavailable, the satellite antenna can be manually cranked to its stowed position. This process is completed by using the included speed wrench to turn the motor shafts that are located behind each of the black plugs at the base of the satellite antenna. One shaft will control azimuth, the other elevation of the antenna. Once the satellite antenna is stowed, electrical power will no longer be required for the remainder of the takedown. De-energize the MCT by placing all of the circuit breakers into their off or down position. The generator can now be stopped or the alternate power source disconnected. Stop the generator by holding down on the start and stop switch. Next, open the wiring entrance box at the front of the MCT and disconnect all of the RF and Ethernet cables. Replace any and all weather covers and secure and lock the door at the front of the unit. Again, a second person is useful in managing the cables as the mast is retracted. Pull each T-handle in succession in order to retract the mast. Air will be heard escaping from the mast drain valve as the sections retract. During this process, be careful not to snag or pinch the cables or the user's fingers between the mast sections. Once the mast is fully retracted, disconnect the RF cables from the base of the cantenna. Coil the cables loosely in hand-over-hand -hand fashion to not kink or damage them. Stow the RF cables in the clamps located below the window, inside of the MCT unit. Unpin and remove the cantenna assembly from the mast. Stow the cantenna in its dedicated storage bracket by pinning it in place and securing the clamping arms and strap. Replace the covers on the DEN connections to prevent damage to the threads while in storage. Loosely coil the Ethernet cables that are connected to the Wi-Fi array and secure them to the array structure using the rubber clamps provided. Unpin and remove the Wi-Fi array from the mast and secure it into its dedicated storage bracket at the rear of the MCT interior. Use the securing pin and safety bail to hold the Wi-Fi array in place. Once more, ensure that the mast is fully retracted and seated. Replace the canvas weather bag on the mast and secure in place with its strap. The mast must always be stored retracted with the canvas bag installed and the drain valve located at the base of the mast in the open position. This will prevent water intrusion during storage, prolonging the life of the mast seals. Proper storage will also ensure the honoring of the manufacturer's warranty. Prepare the MCT for transit by performing a final inspection in and around the unit to ensure proper securement and stowage of all equipment. Proper takedown and stowage of the MCT unit, coupled with consistently following the recommended maintenance program, will ensure that the unit is best prepared for its next deployment.